the first thought I had was, oh yeah, this thing fracks. I think this bike definitely has like a Jacqueline Hyde thing going on. Playing it pretty conservative here. Oh yeah, baby. So this is gonna be a different kind of review video than you're used to because the Tracer 9 GT is a motorcycle that I am actually interested in purchasing for myself. I don't like talking about myself on this channel very much. I don't like diving into my personal motorcycle stable, but some of you might have seen that I transformed my desert sled into a bit of a touring machine. A few weeks ago, I completed a 1300 mile trip with the bike, it's maiden touring voyage out to Big Bend in three days. It was a lot of fun, I learned a lot of things, but I had this nagging feeling in my brain that if I just had a better motorcycle, I might have had a better time because the seat was a little uncomfortable, some things didn't work quite right, and I just kept having this feeling where I was like, man, what would it have been like if I had a proper touring motorcycle? And the Yamaha Tracer 9 GT has been on the top of my list for over a year now. So this Tracer 9 GT finds its way into my garage today by way of Twisted Road. The only way I could do the proper testing I wanted to on this machine was by renting this motorcycle for the entire weekend and putting down 366 miles on the clock. So that's what I did with this machine. I rented it on Twisted Road and I really got to understand if I actually wanted this bike. And it actually was a harder question to answer than I had anticipated. So if you're interested in trying out a motorcycle, renting it on Twisted Road is one of the best ways you can do it. I invested in the company back in 2020 because I really believe in this mission of peer-to-peer -peer rentals. You can't really get a feel for a bike on a test ride, so if you can find it locally in your area, ride it for a weekend, and really see what it's like to live with the bike, you're gonna get a way better understanding. Hit the link down below and get a free day of riding using my reference code in the link down below. I'd love for you to check out Twisted Road. They powered this video and it's been a great support to the channel. Okay, so Tracer 9 GT. This thing is kind of like an MT-09 on touring steroids. The base frame is the same. This is a 2022 version with the 890cc triple, making 115 horsepower and 69 foot-pounds of torque. At this point, I kind of feel like Yamaha put 69 foot-pounds of torque. It's a bit of a meme to anybody anyways. It's got hand guards, heated grips, cruise control, upright ergonomics, a five gallon tank, a nice windscreen. It pretty much has everything you would need to just chuck on mile after mile. The owner of this bike actually did a trip out to Wyoming and back, if memory serves me correctly, and said that the thing performed beautifully with him and his wife two up on the machine. So on paper, the Yamaha Tracer 9 GT really hits all of my boxes. It has a torquey, fun triple cylinder engine. It's got lots of flavor and charm. It's not too heavy. It weighs about 490 pounds. It's got a comfortable seat. It can tour, can do all these things, and it can rip through a twisty road. But I tell you guys this a lot, that you really can't ride the spec sheet. A bike comes together as more than the sum of its specs. And it's why I'm not gonna be buying a Yamaha Tracer 9 GT. Look, I said this video wasn't going to be some unbiased, comprehensive review. This is literally just my opinion on the Tracer 9 GT and if it's gonna fit for my kind of riding. Here's the thing. A touring motorcycle makes compromises to be able to go long distances. If you start off with the most basic, simple motorcycle you can think of, you adjust it to do the things you want to do. Think of a standard Japanese UJM machine from the 70s. Over time, we adapted those bikes with their big steel cradle frames to be more sporting, more touring, more adventure focused. We reduced all the cylinders down to make crazy little lightweight dirt bikes. Motorcycles all exist in compromises, and for me personally, I think optimizing for touring in the sense of this Tracer 9 GT kind of defeats the purpose of the kind of riding that I'm trying to do nowadays. One of the hardest questions to answer, and it's one that I throw to you guys a lot when you're thinking about your first motorcycle, is what kind of riding do you actually want to do and are you able to do? And for me, my family is growing and there's just no way that I can swing two, three, or even four huge long road trips in a year. I'm gonna be lucky if I get to do one, maybe two long distance adventures on my bike per year for the next two to three years probably. With that in mind, it doesn't really make sense to get a motorcycle that's so optimized for touring because it starts to impact everything else the way the motorcycle is. 
For example, this motorcycle with its big five gallon tank can do 200 miles of range. It has a big upright windshield that keeps you nice and comfortable. And on yesterday's ride when I was slabbing it up on some huge highway, that works really great. But I found the whole setup to be a little cumbersome and a little super scooter-esque whenever I was riding around town. Yes, the 890cc triple makes gobs of power and torque, and it's truly a superlative engine, and I really can't wait to see what Yamaha does with the R9, but it's honestly a little too much. I know that sounds crazy from the guy who literally owned a Turbo Hayabusa, but maybe I'm just slowing down a little bit, because I don't really think I can even use all this power. I took this bike down some really tight, twisty roads, some of my favorite here in Austin. I went down Lion Creek, the Willow City Loop, all kinds of amazing back road hill country routes that we have here. And honestly, something that weighs 500 pounds makes 120-ish horsepower and 70 foot-pounds of torque just kind of felt a little unwieldy. And look, over time, I'm sure I would get used to the feeling of a big, burly motorcycle, but the elephant in the room for me is that once I actually had this bike in my garage and actually started riding it around, I didn't really feel like I fit the bike. Motorcycling is such a personal and oftentimes vain thing that we do. We buy a motorcycle because we wanna show the world, hey, this is who I am. This is what I represent. This is what I'm about. And I think for me at the stage that I'm at, I'm 31 years old, I'm a relatively youthful guy. I like doing track days and I like doing wheelies on my desert sled and goofing around. This thing's a little too serious and grown up for my tastes. And yes, I can't lie to you, it's an incredibly competent machine. It does everything it's supposed to do extraordinarily well. So if you're looking at getting a sport touring bike, the Tracer 9 GT should be absolutely the top of your list. It's ridiculously capable. Heck, even if you're coming off of a Goldwing, you want something more sporty, this thing is really comfortable. The seat was awesome for five hours in the day in the saddle. The wind protection worked really well on my chest, but ultimately, the spec sheets don't matter and you ride based on emotion. And I just simply didn't get that special feeling that I get with some bikes. You know, this is something I often say about BMWs, but truthfully, the Tracer 9 GT left me a little cold too. I think there's something about these sport bikes on stilts that at first you think they're really interesting, they make all this power, they're super comfortable, but after time goes on, they're just not that particularly interesting to ride. Sure, they will accomplish the task you set them out to do extremely well. So if you are the type of guy that's doing massive miles, maybe you're commuting every single day on your motorcycle and you need something that's just gonna be comfortable, dependable, and pick you up when you're not feeling your best, the Tracer 9 GT is an awesome bike. But I had to be real with myself when I was riding it the last two days, over 366 miles, and say, I don't really think this is the experience I'm looking for. I found myself really missing the charm and flavor of an air-cooled, lumpy engine. I found myself missing the scrambly qualities of my desert sled, knowing that I could chuck it down a random little gravel road or an offshoot and not really think too much about it. And yes, I felt like this thing was a bit of a battleship. With its big tank and its commanding stance, it was weirdly smaller than my desert sled and also fatter. And that really lent itself to that super scooter feeling that I had in my brain. And truthfully, I don't really think this bike is much of a looker. And people buy bikes based on looks, myself included. My desert sled is beautiful, I love it. Now, all that to say, the Tracer 9 GT is an insanely good motorcycle. Once I got this bike over on the side of the tire, it's all sport bike. It's got a ridiculous amount of grunt off the get-go. Like every stoplight I left, I just banged through the quick shifters and just mercilessly left everybody in the dust. It is genuinely an extremely fast bike that anybody could be proud to own. I mean, this thing makes so much power and torque, I can't even fathom of someone riding this thing and thinking it's not fast enough. It is seriously so fast. Super fast, super capable, super comfortable. What's not to love? I mean, if it's the type of thing you're looking for, you should get one. But as I said, this video is not an unbiased, comprehensive review of the Tracer 9 GT. Rather, it's just a simple experience that I had with it and why my search for the perfect motorcycle for me is still ongoing. Once I put the Tracer 9 GT back in the garage after all those miles, I looked longingly at the sled and I thought to myself, what if I just put a comfort seat on it? What if I just put those handguards back on? What if I just, and then, 
I kept thinking where I think I can make that bike absolutely perfect for me. Or maybe I'll end up riding something else and think, actually, this is the ticket right here. Because this big, wide, commanding battle tank of a sport touring bike is probably not what I'm actually looking for, despite the spec sheet telling me that it absolutely fits every single mark that I had for a motorcycle that I'm looking for today. All right, here's another funny thing I noticed about this bike. So it doesn't have range. Despite giving you fuel, consumption, MPG, it for some reason doesn't calculate range anywhere. So what you have to do is you have to go here to this one, right in there. You got to reset your fuel consumption. And that's how you keep track of your range. Uh, pretty dumb in my opinion uh that's not what i would do if i was designing a motorcycle if i had all the information i'm sure the new one gives you range because that's it's a brand new screen everything is different on it but it's just a bit odd uh so yeah that's what you do to give a more accurate reading on your actual um you know fuel consumption five gallon tank on this thing which is pretty good so at 42 mpg average that i'm seeing on here you're good for at least 200 miles on a tank which is plenty before you want to stop even though the seat is incredibly comfortable and uh you could easily do 150 miles at a time no problem it's a bit damp and moist today it's like that weird condition where there's like just enough water for you to start feeling a lack of grip and the oil start coming up off of the road not awesome um, so I can't can't push it too hard today and also it's a rented bike I don't want to go too crazy but one thing I noticed from riding yesterday and today the front brake it just is not what I would consider like spot on but that's kind of to be expected with a big bike like this with ABS with a, a stock master cylinder maybe worn out pads um, the front brake feel to me I feel like I can't get the proper amount of bite it's like the bite point changes as I ride based on fade and like whenever I, whenever I go to modulate the brake or trail it off, I feel like I can't be as accurate as I am on my desert sled, but my desert sled has an RCS 15 on it that has direct lines down to the caliper. So it's a little unfair. And the braking system is something that I always dial in on my personal motorcycles. I usually swap the master cylinder. I usually go direct. I just like having that extra layer of feel and I just I don't really feel like I'm getting that out of this bike also like <laughs> here's the thing when you jump on the Tracer 9 and you know if you if you ride it straight you're like oh man it's a nice comfortable touring bike once you flick this thing over the first thought I had was oh yeah this thing like that was the very first thing I thought whenever I had the bike like this and I just kind of chucked it in I was like oh yeah this thing can party and that makes sense it's basically an MT-09 one of the new generations the frame is awesome the motor's awesome everything works super super well on this thing and I just find it to be very sporty very fun to ride Trail it in. See that those brakes, though, don't have a lot of precision. But man, this thing holds a line beautifully. It's got loads of grunt. And like I said, once I got it over on the side of the tire, I was like, oh yeah, this thing, it's a sport bike. One that you can genuinely get yourself in a lot of trouble with if you're not careful, honestly. This is a pretty fast bike and uh, there's times where you want a fast bike and there's times you don't want a fast bike, you know? Yeah, a little damp, a little moist. Y'all can see that I'm uh, playing it pretty conservative here. Yeah, baby. Yeah, it may look like a fat dad bike, but it, it can party pretty damn good, man. One area I'm thoroughly enjoying the Tracer 9 over my desert sled is the kind of 
passing power and overall grunt this thing has. There's no comparing this 890cc liquid-cooled, hopped-up, triple-cylinder engine to what's inside of my desert sled. Uh, this thing makes 50 more horsepower, close to, and like 20 more foot-pounds of torque. It's a prodigious engine, and anytime you want it, it's got tons of grunt. And that triple is its one of the best engines Yamaha makes for sure. It's so cool to get that flavor and charm in a Japanese bike. I think they're the only Japanese bike manufacturer making a, a triple cylinder right now, if I remember correctly. So it's pretty unique. I will say one of the things I don't like about the bike, though, I, the new one has this fix. They have a single larger 7-inch TFT. This uh, is a 2022 model. Uh, so the new one has the adaptive radar and some other stuff, but this one has the split screen and right now when it's kind of cloudy and overcast, pretty easy to read. I can definitely see all the information. However, <laughs> during the day, all these numbers are so small, it's, pra it's practically illegible. Uh, it really sucks, to be honest. Um, and fiddling with the menus is really not very fun. Uh, for me, this is a personal thing, but I have nerve damage on my right arm, so it's, it's actually quite difficult for me to hit this menu button over here with my thumb. Uh, obviously, for other riders, not a big deal, but for me, I always prefer to see the menu stuff over here on the left just because it's easier for me personally to navigate that. That's not an issue on the bike. That's a personal fit issue for me. One thing that's kind of funny about the Tracer 9 is uh, I think the, the left-hand cluster over here, the new one has a new joystick system, but man, this is like battleship territory. And that's really where I'm getting kind of torn at this thing, is that for me, where I'm at in my life, I'm like, am I really ready to own a battleship bike like this? Because while it isn't that big, you know, it's not a gold wing, it certainly screams like big bad dad energy. There's a word for it in Portuguese called Tiozão. It means like big uncle. And it's like, yeah, just kind of like, like a big, big fat guy. <laughs> like, I don't know. Like, that's the vibe that I get from the bike. And that's just not me, you know? Like, I've always had a little bit more of like a youthful energy. Like, I don't know. Like, I just... I don't think this is quite the right fit, personally. I find the Tracer 9 GT to be extremely good at this sort of thing, too crawling stop and go traffic despite the fact that this bike weighs almost 500 pounds uh it's very good at slow speed it's super i mean the center balance is pretty much perfect uh when you're riding it you would not feel that it's almost 500 pounds it feels pretty much like a naked bike it feels a lot i mean it obviously feels a lot like an mt09 because it's based on mt09 but despite the fact that it's got this huge five gallon tank um it doesn't feel super out of sorts doing this sort of thing on the way back yesterday, I got stuck in a bunch of traffic and had to just play this little game where you try to see if you can keep your foot from going down and then someone comes to a full stop and you gotta put your foot down. But, you know, the clutch pull is super light. It's not even hydraulic, but it's cable clutch. It feels really nice. And I'm lucky that I don't have to commute for a job. But if I did, man, this bike would be pretty sweet to do that with. You just chuck on a, a hard shell luggage on the back of this rack here put the windshield up this is basically super scooter spec <laughs> i think that's why i'm having trouble really identifying with it and really coming to love it because it does kind of feel just like a big scooter you know with the quick shift up and down the tall windshield which i took off so it feels a little more like a real motorcycle to me but i don't know man it ends up having this like very utilitarian scooter vibe but then of course you flick the throttle and you're like yeah it's got this big beefy 890 cc triple tons of flavor and charm lots of character um but the sum of the parts is actually less than the whole in my opinion at least for me again this is a bias review this is not my usual review because i'm actually considering purchasing this bike not this one but maybe the brand new one and so that's why this video has a different flavor to it just want you guys to know that i'm not gonna go through and who's this bike for and blah 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 i'm trying to figure out if i want to buy it if i want to spend my hard-earned cash on something like this and so far i'm a little 50 50 on it but slow speed it's very impressive I think this bike definitely has like a Jacqueline Hyde thing going on. You can ride it so politely and so correctly, you know? 
because of how upright and a bit larger it is, uh, you know, it'll do this sort of thing where you're just like, you're not trying to push the pace at all. Uh, it'll do this perfectly all day long where you're like adding literally zero lean angle and kind of just cruising along your favorite road. Uh, that's really nice, you know? That's honestly where I'm at with a lot of my motorcycles and especially the Desert Sled, and I think the Desert Sled does this so well, is that I don't really want to go balls out all the time. You know, I want to sometimes push the pace and have some fun, but a lot of the times it's nice to be able to just kick back cruise and relax a little bit and it's really nice to see that the tracer does this without complaining at all you know um a lot of sport bikes they're tuned in such a way that you're like all right i have to get after it you know this bike is demanding that i go and do something crazy with it but this thing the way it's tuned the ample low down power i mean i can click it up into fifth gear here and i still have plenty of grunt to get out of these corners see here I can just kind of I'm already speeding so you got to slow down a little bit and then when you want to party a little bit hopefully there's no law enforcement we're good okay you don't really know if you want to hang off of it or not I mean you can but it doesn't feel quite right. It feels like when you hang off of an ADV bike, you're like, well, like I could do that, but you know, it'll just, it'll just feel a little funny to do that. I think it makes more sense to just ride this thing with like the fast upright dad pace, you know? Like if you've ever seen a BMW GS rider just haul an ass through the canyons and they're just perfectly upright, masterfully controlling throttle and brakes. <laughs> That's what it feels like you should do with this bike. It's a real treat to ride at three tenths, to five tenths, or seven tenths. Obviously, I'm on the street, so I can't see what it's like closer to the limit. That would require a track. But man, like, this is really great. I love vehicles that are like this, that they're fun at slow speeds or fast speeds. That's really cool. And this thing is really quite a fun bike. If you made it all the way to the end of the video, I encourage you to ride the bikes you're interested in. You can look at the spec sheets all day long, you can think about what a bike is gonna be like, but until you actually ride it, you don't know if you're really gonna jive with it. I thought I was gonna love the Tracer 9 GT. I thought it was gonna fulfill every desire I had for my motorcycle, but it turns out I'm still on the hunt. So I'm gonna be looking out for more motorcycles. I'm probably gonna keep modifying my desert sled and enjoying it, and who knows, maybe someday I'll find that mythical bike that I've been looking for that's gonna finally allow me to sell the desert sled and try something else out. I'll tell you what, the search has definitely left sport touring bikes in the dust. I'm actually not interested in those. I think I'm down to two motorcycles. I think it's the Desert X and the Touareg 660. Or maybe that Triumph Scrambler 1200 XE. I don't know anymore, guys. I don't know. Maybe I'll just keep the sled and just keep enjoying what I've got. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about my ridiculous journey to try to find a motorcycle that I'm gonna enjoy on the street. Thanks again for Twisted Road for sponsoring today's video. Remember, if you want to actually try a motorcycle out, go and see what's for rent in your area. It's a ton of fun. You get to interact with a local motorcycle owner. You get to get their bikes out for a weekend, really try them out. The whole experience is a blast. I highly recommend it. Use my link down below for a free day of riding and go and check out Twisted Road. All that being said, thanks so much for watching today's video. I truly do appreciate it. I'll catch you guys in the next one. See you later.